Well, Dracula's back this October, folks, as Universal sets forth their chance to reboot, relaunch, however you want to look at their famous monster franchises with Dracula Untold. It's a great film with uh, amazing special effects that have already been revealed in the trailer. Luke Evans, Dominique Cooper are, are starring in this. We have one of the great actors on with us, Noah Huntley. Noah, how are you? Hi there, Brandon. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> What an exciting project to be a part of. I want to jump right into it. And Can you tell us a little bit more than it being a Dracula story? Can you give us a little bit of the insight on kind of how this one's going to be kind of unique? I think um, it's quite interesting because it goes back to some of the more original Bram Stoker ideas. So we started with Lackia, sort of uh, past ancient day, 15th, 16th century um, Romania, uh, so Transylvania, to... Um, meet Vlad the Impaler, who is the man who will have to go through the trial, if you like, of Dracula, whether he can, um, whether he can complete the trial in order to stay immortal and uh, be with his wife and son or to become one of the immortals. <laughs> I wonder what happens. <laughs> we know you know how it goes, but it's definitely an exciting journey. And this one will be very interesting. I'm, I'm excited about this one as well because it's a first-time director with a project. I know you did a short film called The Draft, but I don't know much about Gary Shore. Tell us what Gary Shore kind of brought to the project and what your experience was with him. Um, <laughs> I think Gary, Gary was probably learning a lot on this one. It was the first one, and uh, he with a bunch of people for three, four months who were all demanding that they kind of have some integrity behind their character as much as just uh, the story leading the script. So I think he, he, had, he was sort of thrown in at the deep end. They had a fantastic crew and cast, for that matter, that were really um, cool and supportive. And um, I think I think uh, early on they saw that this was going to be something quite successful and we're talking about sort of sequels. And then Legendary came on and invested a further chunk of money and, and opened up the Asian market and things. So suddenly it became, as you say, a global franchise movie. Um, but within all that, I think we've got a really cool um, story that's not just about effects, which are sublime, and uh, you know the the visual spectacle that is so much part of modern movies. Well, you definitely have some great co-stars next to you, and you play a character, Captain Petru. I think is how you pronounce that. Yeah. So, <coughs> so what what does what does he get to do here? Is he is he is he part of Vlad's team, or is he on the opposing team? Yeah, he's part of Vlad's team for sure. <laughs> It's not a. It's a pretty raggle taggle army, really, in Valachia. They're being kind of tyrannised by the Turks um, under the head of uh, Sultan Mehmed II, who's played by Dominic Cooper, and uh, he's just this sort of marauding Goliath and army that's uh, sort of making it incredibly difficult to just uh, put up with um, taxing and taking sort of children from the Valachians and, and making that just impossible. So in the end, it becomes a, a fight of David versus Goliath, really, in that you've got Vlad the Impaler against this 100,000 strong Turkish force and something beyond the human needs to be found in order to overcome them. And whether in the historical context of the story that was Vlad the Impaler creating a superstition, almost a legend around his name and instilling fear in his enemy before he killed them, or whether it is something that comes from a more supernatural nature, is uh, is sort of is blended within this, this movie, really. So that's... Well, it sounds like a very exciting backdrop to the film, and obviously something that is being explored a lot more detail. We haven't seen this in other Dracula films, and it's such a long history, obviously, uh, dating back to Bram Stoker's work. And with these Scenes that have already been revealed in the trailer are these massive battle scenes and, and, and all that. And, of course, you've got this great cast that you're working alongside. How, do you, how is it as the actor to kind of help? How do you coordinate some of those battle scenes and, and, and do some of that from the actor's standpoint? Do they literally do they, they give each one of you an assignment? Like, this is what you're going to do in this shot. You're going to do this in that shot. Or, or, you know, they choreograph like dancers and fight sequence. So, so you'll, they'll tend to be sort of, you know, fight up certainly amongst the, the stunts guys. It's like, okay, you'll fight one and fight three. And then we've got fight two and fight four or fight five that you guys are in. So we can do that different days and we'll fit around the schedule that's working. But I generally, you're, you know... Uh, it was the same on Snow White. It was uh, another Universal picture I did sort of a couple of years ago, and they they like to get everyone in training early on. I think it's so then you're committed to the project before the contract's been arranged. Right, <laughs> you're locked in, Noah. You're locked in. You're no backing out now. <laughs> exactly. You've been, you you haven't got the energy to move anyway, which is true. They're pretty grueling. Those those um 
those those training days. But um, mm. I mean, they're great. The thing that was funny on this film was that Gary didn't really understand the difference between a rubber sword and a and a and a metal sword. You know, they make them out of this aircraft aluminium um, material, and um, he would say, "Why didn't you carry on the shark? Why didn't you carry?" He used to get very vocal about his his issues, and he's like, "Well, I can't. If I start attacking these stuntmen with rubber swords with this metal sword, they'll literally die." It might look good on camera, but I don't think I can go to that. Extreme. We're gonna run out. We're gonna run out of your your star cast real quick. It'll just be yeah. Luke Evans. Luke Evans just standing there, going, "What happened, everybody? They're all dead. They're all dead." <laughs> <laughs> and that's the story of Dracula. Um, <laughs> Universal calls it a wrap and goes, "I guess we'll go on to one of the other monster films now because we didn't know how to use rubber swords properly." <laughs> <laughs> so much comedy could come from such a wicked tale. Um, the exciting thing, I suppose, from the franchise point of view is that those characters like Van Helsing and some of the more traditional um, characters that come into the story later on, obviously this sort of gives momentum to go into a story that can incorporate them. So I imagine that's quite an exciting prospect, whether it actually comes to fruition or not. It's obviously a pretty long shoot trying to piece this together, and you guys are on some really cool locations. I know you filmed in Ireland, in particular, where Bram Stoker was even from, so that was really pretty awesome. But any cool stories or funny stories that you can share with us, maybe about your castmates or just from the experience as a whole? <laughs> I mean, we... Is- See, folks, he's laughing. We know it's really bad. He just has to decide. He's trying to decide how bad he wants it to be. That's really what that laugh means, just for those of you that don't know. <laughs> <laughs> just going to present the fact. Um, it was pretty funny. Luke Luke was pretty busy every single day, and he was kind of two hours with a wig and you know his prosthetics, half time and makeup. So he was basically off. We didn't. I think we barely saw Luke. But as a consequence, a lot of the other characters were sort of working. We were there for three months actually filming and a month of training. So, but I'd say you know probably six weeks, six to eight weeks. Some of the actors. So there was some, there was some time off. And Dublin, uh, Belfast, rather, is a fun city. So we got to see a lot of it. The more wholesome aspect is I got to run with Zach McGowan. He's a half marathon runner and beyond. So we used to run sort of along the river in Belfast together, which was was cool. So <laughs> there's the wholesome fun time, and the other fun time is just have to imagine. <laughs> well, there's a Belfast part and a marathon part. Where you can fill in the gaps, folks, but we're going to move on. Uh, Noah, you also have an exciting new series coming. This is actually E! Entertainment's first actual scripted series. Very exciting to see them come on board. We're having just a great glory era of television, in my opinion. This is another one of these that I'm very interested in because I love history. And this is called The Royals. And I know you star with Elizabeth Hurley. I don't know much about as, you know, we, it says modern day London. So I'm not quite sure exactly what else do we have to work with here. So give me an idea of what you're doing in this fictional representation of the royal family in London in the modern day. And that gives license to be the most, the most kind of outlandish behavior you could ever imagine amongst the sort of the knobby um, elite of, of England. And, it, and it's sort of an American take on it. So there's sort of a lot of... The debauchery is just sort of glossy in a way that, um, you know, here it is. It's a bit more conservative or something. So it's ended up being becoming a cross, if you like, between Dynasty and Downton Abbey. <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. So your character is Alistair. What, 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 who, who is Alistair? What, what are you doing in this, Noah? You, 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 you tease me with the Belfast experience. I'm a little concerned having you run around modern day London now. <laughs> well, he kind of keeps himself to himself. He's, he's come from a military background, so he's sort of decorated. Um, we never quite decided what I was, whether I was a major or a lieutenant. But anyway, he's a decorated war hero. And um, he is essentially the teenage sweetheart of Elizabeth Hurley, who becomes and is the queen in this series. Okay. So um, she's obviously having a terrible relationship with the king, and Alice is her sort of... But yet she has to remain dutiful to those sort of noble um, institutions of monarchy and things. You know, you have to put on a, a good face. So she's sort of like a celebrity queen, and she puts on a good face, but behind it all there are these these other sort of strands at work, and I'm a kind of enigmatic character throughout, who when everything goes balmy all around her, is sort of who she comes to. So he's kind of a a nice character. 
That's how dismissive Noah is of really trying to admit that he's like the hot guy the queen likes. So, you know, we're just trying to be... <laughs> the, pre- the, presser, the presser describes you in that way. So, you know, hey, I guess that's what we'll have to embrace, Noah. It's who, it's who you've become in modern-day London. Yeah, he's enigmatic. I think that's the thing. But he is, he is almost naked, too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I love the fact, because you, you actually have done some amazing work in films that I just love. You have two in particular. Obviously, the, the Narnia franchise, you have a, a role in that, 28 Days Later. Is there a role that you look back on or a special memory that you look back on that you can share with us, like something that's just still, it'll always be special to you? Oh, I think... I think when I heard I was working with Danny Boyle, I was pretty excited. Yeah. I think I'd been meditating a lot before that, and then I was doing prayers, just prayers and prayers. Like, I really want to do this, really want to do this. This would be great to do this. And then, um, and then they offered it. And I just think he's such a visionary, and he's so childlike in his mind. He's a, he's a real pleasure to work for. You never feel like children, children, if they tell other children off, they do it because they feel that's what they ought to do based on adult behavior. But children, really, like Danny, are just sort of creating and, and um, excited by by creating something that's new and original and worthy. And uh, it's kind of, that, that's pretty cool. Once you work with him, you kind of know it's not your fault anymore. Maybe it's just the director's not as good as what I'm used to. Fantastic, fantastic. Well, you, 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 you got to work with Dominic Cooper, who was in Captain America. Of course, Charlie Cox is in uh, Dracula Untold as well. I didn't mention him earlier, but he gets to play Daredevil. So I know you guys are talking some of the talk. Is there a superhero that Noah Huntley wouldn't mind playing if Marvel came calling? <laughs> That's a good question. God, <laughs> It's what everybody wants to know these days. It's like there's like they they wind up like sixty five movies. It seems like every time you turn around, there's another TV series or movie. So hey, there'll be room for you. Just hang in there, buddy. <laughs> God, that's right. Well, Christian Bale, he started out in England, didn't he? I think Batman's probably a pretty sexy one. I, I, we never get any American American leads anymore, bro. I'm sorry. Like Hugh Jackman is Wolverine, and, and yeah, they're all they're all from overseas. They're either Brits or they're Aussie, man. There'll be room for you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to say. I feel like I start counseling you now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. Uh, Noah Huntley, uh, it's Dracula Untold opens October 10th. It's been moved up a week in case for those of you that didn't have that scheduled properly. got to get three, three full weeks in before Halloween there. So October 10th will be open here in the States. And the Royals opens in 2015, but I don't have a release date. No, do they give you any insight on when that actually drops on E? No, they, they, you know, I don't know. They put it there. They're working on the second series now, which is the sort of thing that's in hand. But they were always talking about doing a sort of January, February release. Yeah. And everyone's been very cagey about any specific date. So I'm kind of... Uh, I don't think they'll, they'll keep it hanging around for ages. There'd be no point in that. So. No, no, no. January, February sounds about right. So I, I just haven't got an actual date yet. No, so. Well, we will definitely know. We'll definitely know. The, the hot guy running around modern-day England is what we're going to remember him as, Noah Huntley. But but first and foremost, he's now, Jack. He's now actually they've built a set for him now, Alex DeLacy. They built his own <laughs> cottage. to go see where he spends most of his time plotting sort of his evil um, actions. But um, that's always been quite encouraging as an actor. He's like, oh, great, they built a set. They built a set for me. They were invested. Something, something, lo- something long standing. If they don't kill me, if if they don't kill me off, I'll at least make it to season four. Then I'm syndicated. <laughs> at least my house will. <laughs> my house, will, I'll be on a tour. I won't be there. I'm not getting paid anymore. But my house is there. Oh, the truth behind acting and and filmmaking and stuff. It's just so funny. We can laugh about these kinds of because you gotta ask. You have to laugh. I guess I don't know what else to do sometimes. But right. I, the last thing I was expecting is to do a sort of, it's a timed interview, and actually I've laughed so much by having this one. Absolutely brilliant. Noah, thank you again for fitting us into your busy schedule, and I look forward to both these projects immensely, and uh, maybe we'll catch up to talk again soon. Oh, thank you. Cheers, Brandon.